All right, so we've learned how to balance equations. It's time to talk about the types of chemical reactions. So your essential question, how do you predict the products of chemical reactions? That's what we're gonna focus on. Um, all right, there are five different types of chemical reactions. All right, the first one that we're gonna talk about is single displacement. So let me say that again, five different types of chemical reactions. The first one's called single displacement. Now, we have an algebraic representation of this particular type of reaction. And I like to say A by itself. You can think of that as like element, all right? Pure compound here. Well, I would say element. And B, C, this is a compound. So a single displacement, how do we recognize it? So an element and a compound react such that the element replaces part of the compound, okay? So down here, here we have element, magnesium plus compound, silver nitrate, and you can see that that magnesium is kicking off the silver, and so now the silver is by itself, and now the magnesium is with the nitrate. All right, so single displacement reaction, element plus compound, um, and partners trading places. So magnesium is a metal, and in the compound, it's replacing the metal. It's kicking it off, making the silver by itself, and the magnesium with the nitrate. Here's another example. So now I'm gonna, again, we have iron by itself, compound, copper sulfate. So if you think about the iron, it's gonna kick off the copper, all right? And it's going to replace the copper. So it be, replaces the copper, making uh, iron sulfite, sulfate, and now the copper is by itself, okay? Let's look at another example. Magnesium. Magnesium is a metal. As we look, this is a compound. So how do I even recognize this as single displacement? Element plus compound. Now, let me also say it could be compound plus element, but take a look at this element. This element is a metal. So when I'm thinking about this reaction, the magnesium is going to kick off a metal. All right, so it's gonna basically trade places, leaving us with the lead by itself and magnesium nitrate together. Okay, one more example. Um, okay. Magnesium, again, great example, but again, what can we recognize here? We have something by itself plus compound. That's when I identify it as single displacement. When I think about single displacement, I'm gonna look at this guy. This guy happens to be a metal, and so it's going to re re replace, right, the more metallic element, which would be hydrogen in this case. And we're gonna have the magnesium chloride now as a compound and hydrogen gas. Okay, sodium bromide plus chlorine. Now, again, Ooh, we tricked you. We have this pattern, element plus compound, element plus compound, element plus compound. And then suddenly we throw in something a little different. Well, what's really different? Well, compound plus element. Does that make any difference? No, still single displacement. We have another difference in this one, and that is our elemental molecule, chlorine, is not a metal. So in a single displacement reaction, this is going to replace the element that is similar to it or the non-metal in the compound. So you're gonna get sodium chloride and bromine as your products. All right, how do we predict a single displacement or replacement, by the way? I use those two words interchangeably. It's the same thing. So when I look at, and this is exactly where we need to be, you are given the reactants, how do you predict the products? Well, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna identify the type of reaction that it is. And that means you have to kind of memorize the, the 
algebraic way that the reactions can be represented. So for me, I'm gonna look at this guy and I go, okay, this is an element. And I look at this guy and I go, element plus compound. Well, when I have element plus compound or compound plus element, I know it's single displacement. Now I'm gonna look at the single guy because a single guy is gonna kick off the same type of element in the compound. So since this is a metal, it's going to kick off potentially the hydrogen. So we go ahead and we do that. And now look, there's my hydrogen and my magnesium and my chlorine. All right, now like replaces like, right? Metal is replacing the more metal in the compound. Remember, the metal is always written first, or the cation is always written first. All right, things we have to recognize here, though, we should know something about hydrogen as an element. It's one of our seven diatomic molecules. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are always going to be diatomic. And the other thing here is we can't forget about our chemical naming. So we have to go back now and we have to adjust our formulas for the rules with chemical naming that we know. And so we know that that has to be H2. It's a diatomic molecule. And just as a reminder, we know that an ion for magnesium is 2 plus and an ion for chloride is minus 1. And so when we write this formula, we have to make sure to write the correct formula for this compound, so MgCl2. And lastly, like you've already learned, we have to balance the equation. And so when we look at this equation here, you've got one magnesium here, one magnesium here. You have two, one hydrogen here and two there. So we're gonna put a two in front of the HCl, and that will then balance everything. So this is good, okay. Example number two. So here we're looking at example number two. So we have to ask ourselves, okay, I have five different types of reactions. Which one of the five is this? We see compound plus element. So that is single displacement. Now I'm gonna look at the, the element that's by itself. And again, like replaces like, this is not a metal. This is more of a molecular compound or a non-metal. So in the formula, I'm gonna go up this time, it's going to replace the chlorine. So we go ahead and we write our products down. Now we need to look and we need to make sure that our compounds are written correctly. So is this written correctly? So we wanna think about that potassium and that fluoride ion, that looks good. And then we should all be looking at this one and recognizing, oh wait, that's one of the seven diatomics and it should be written with a Cl2, all right? Uh, last thing we need to do, again, now that we've written our formulas correctly, we want to balance our equation. And you're gonna put a two and a two here and life will be good. I'm gonna erase this up here. Okay. Third example, a little bit more complicated, but the same process is going to happen. We have compound plus element. Five types of reactions. When I have compound plus element, I'm gonna start thinking single replacement or displacement reaction. So once I do that, I'm gonna look at the, the element and, and see what type of, of thing it is. So this happens to be a metal. And so as we've already talked, that means it's gonna kick off the metal in the formula and they're gonna trade partners, leaving the mercury um, by itself. So we're gonna go ahead and make those changes. Now notice, I did not change anything in this formula right now, and we have to be really careful because uh, we are gonna to have to stop and make adjustments for this formula. Um, in this particular situation, ah, there we go, we're gonna fix the formulas, unless otherwise specified, assume the transition metal takes the same charge as the one it replaces. So if we look at this formula and we do the reverse crossover method, right? So we know from this that mercury 
has a two plus charge and the phosphate has a three minus charge. So what this is saying is, you know, this guy over here, because he's a transition metal, we don't really know what his ionic charge is. It's variable. And so we're gonna assume that his charge is gonna be the same as the guy he's replacing. So in another problem, it might be a different charge. Okay, that's a big note. All right, and so um, as we look, we can now adjust our formula. And of course, we need to then balance the equation. All right, so we balance an equation by putting a three in front of copper and in front of mercury, and we are good to go. Okay, this is the perfect time. I'd like you to stop the video and try these practice problems. All right, welcome back. I hope that you uh, took the time necessary to go through and kind of practice this single replacement reaction. Here are your answers. All right, I'll give you just a minute to look at that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go on. Double displacement. All right, so single displacement, compound plus element, element plus compound, double displacement, we are looking at what I call compound plus compound. So two compounds react such that the two of the anions or cations switch places. And so here we have that algebraic representation. So we have compound AZ, compound BX. That's how we recognize it as a double replacement or double displacement. Um, and if you can either look at it in two ways, you can look at it as A and B trading partners, or you could look at it as X and Z trading partners, not both at the same time, one or the other, doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, so we come up and we have partners trading, okay? So as we look here, we have compound plus compound. As soon as I see that, I know double displacement. And that means for me, I usually go in the front. That's all, that's just a, how I like to look at it. So I'm gonna kind of look at the partners, the cations switching places. And we're gonna do this in both ways. So silver is gonna go with chlorine, sodium is gonna go with nitrate. And so here we go, we have sodium nitrate and silver chloride. Uh, down here, this is if I let the, the anion switch. And again, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. I would be consistent with whatever you choose. Uh, but when we're looking at the anions, we're looking at chlorine and we're looking at carbonate switching partners. So you can see that over here, cobalt is now gonna be with carbonate and sodium is now gonna be with chloride. And then, then of course you have to balance the equation. Precipitation is often the result of a double displacement reaction. Uh, double displacement reactions are a lot of what we call wet chemistry. As a matter of fact, let's go back. You'll notice that both of my reactants are aqueous and aqueous means dissolved in water. So when we have, when, this, when these substances dissolve, they're gonna dissociate into ions. And so if I take two liquids and I pour them together, uh, one of the ways that I'm gonna know that a reaction has happened is if I get the formation of a precipitate which is a solid formed from a liquid or aqueous reactants. Okay. I love this one. I don't know, I'm, it's probably really hard to see on my PowerPoint, but it's a great reaction. If you're looking at this test tube, we have two clear liquids. Clear liquid here, put clear liquid in here, and suddenly we get a beautiful yellow precipitate. Okay, so here is that reaction. What type of reaction is it? Double displacement, compound plus compound, double displacement. Aqueous, meaning they're dissolved in water. Now, when, and again, I like to go with the cations, when potassium and lead trade partners, right? Potassium is now gonna be with nitrate. Lead is now going to be with iodide, all right? And you can see that the potassium nitrate is still dissolved in water. And that yellow stuff that you're seeing there is our solid precipitate lead to iodide. 
Here is another reaction. And again, I like this one too. This one's a little bit easier to see. And we have compound plus compound. We have silver nitrate plus sodium hydroxide. And again, double displacement. Double displacement means partners are gonna switch. I like to look at cations. So I'm gonna look at silver and sodium trading partners. So that means silver is gonna be with hydroxide, making uh, silver hydroxide. And sodium is gonna be with no nitrate, making silver nitrate. And in this example, we can see that we start with a clear liquid. This pipette also has a clear liquid. And when you mix the two, we get this um, solid formed, which we call a precipitate. How to predict a double displacement reaction in three easy steps. Yes, this is the exact same as with single replacement reactions. So we look right here right? Compound plus compound. The ability to predict your products is right there. I have to know what type of reaction it is. Double displacement because I have compound plus compound. Now I'm going to switch the partners, all right? So I, again, I'm going to have sodium with sulfate. I'm going to have aluminum with bromine. So we just switch partners. That's it. Now, now that we've switched partners, we're going to think about chemical formulas. Are my chemical formulas correct? They are not. So remember your sodium is plus one, your sulfate is two minus. So absolute value crossover, we've got to have a two there. Remember your aluminum is three plus, your bromine is minus one, absolute value crossover, we have to have a three there. So identify the type of reaction predict your products without dealing with chemical naming formulas, and then fix your chemical formulas based on your rules for chemical naming. And lastly, balance your equation, and then you're done. Okay, another example. Identify the type of reaction. Compound plus compound, double displacement. That means potassium and lead are going to switch partners. So let's go ahead and switch those partners. Now we have KNO3 and PBI. And now we want to consider um, the uh, formulas. Now, we know what lead's charge is here in this formula. Okay, so uh, we know that lead is going to be 2 plus. And so we have to now fix our formulas. All right, so we KNO3 is fine because potassium is plus one, nitrate is minus one, and then PBI2 because the lead does carry a two plus charge. And we get that from where it was originally here in this formula. And then you're gonna balance the equation and you're done. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, stop the video. It's time for some practice. Welcome back. These are your um, solved solutions. Again, so it doesn't go through all three process, all three steps, but you have your answer. So hopefully you did amazing on that and let's go on. Synthesis, all right, five types of reactions, single displacement, element plus compound, double displacement, compound plus compound, now we're at synthesis. Synthesis is the most basic, the simplest of the um, types of reactions. And it's when two or more substances, either elements or compounds, react to produce one substance, a compound. So what's nice about a synthesis reaction is we only have one product. Most of the time our synthesis reaction is gonna be element plus element, but we do have some exceptions. So here you can see hydrogen element, oxygen element, synthesis reaction, one product. Magnesium element, oxygen element. Now we call that a molecular element, remember? So uh, don't get confused there. I think of it as element plus element and we have one product, all right? Now this one, this one is our, our one that you almost have to remember. So you have to kind of, again, 
think about this special case synthesis reaction. And it is a metal oxide and water. And I'm using the word metal oxide here because this can be any metal, all right? It's a metal oxide, meaning with oxygen, and water. It has one product, and that one product will be the hydroxide of that metal, okay? Okay, single displacement, double displacement, synthesis, and now we're at decomposition. Now, decomposition, to decompose, means that you undergo, you're gonna break something down. So something bigger gets smaller. So one substance undergoes a reaction to form two or more substances. So one of the things that you're gonna recognize about a decomposition reaction is that there's always only one reactant. So if I only have one reactant, I'm automatically thinking decomposition and it's going to decompose, decompose into or break down into two or more products. This happens to be um, sort of like an elemental decomposition, but we're gonna play there's several different types. Okay, so here is just again, how do I recognize a decomposition? Right here, I only have one reactant decomposition. This reaction is going to break down into two products. Okay, so when I look at this, I think, is it single displacement, element plus compound? No. Is it double displacement, compound plus compound? There, no, there's no plus. Is it synthesis, element plus element? No. Only one reactant, decomposition. Again, one reactant decomposes into two or more products. That's, so one reactant, two or more products. One reactant, two or more products. Decomposition. Uh, by the way, right here, um, decomposition, uh, this little triangle thing uh, means heat. So it just means in the presence of heat or heat is required to make this happen. All right, last one here. Again, sodium chloride, table salt, only one reactant decomposition, and it's gonna break down into, this is an elemental one, it's a binary compound, it breaks down into its two elements that make it up. All right, common decomposition reaction. So we are gonna ask that you know that there are several types of decomposition reactions. So we have five types of reactions, um, and of the decomposition reactions, there are several that you need to memorize. So the first one is the decomposition of metal carbonates. Okay, metal, any metal with carbonate. So carbonate, here's my metal. This can be any metal. You can replace it with aluminum. You can replace it with iron, whatever, it doesn't matter. The products are going to be, so that metal will always be with oxygen, producing a metal oxide. And the second product is always CO2. So you can see, let's see, right here. So metal carbonates, when heated, they produce a metal oxide and CO2. So whatever the metal is, it goes with oxide produce, or oxygen producing an oxide. All right, and then the other product will be CO2. Okay, metal hydroxides, when heated, they're going to break down into a metal oxide and water. Okay, so let's take a look. What does that look like? So here I have nickel hydroxide, only one reactant, decomposition. Now I need to predict the products. So I look, oh, it's nickel with hydroxide. That means that I'm gonna have nickel with oxygen, nickel oxide, and my other product is H2O. Easy. Of course, then you need to balance it and all that good stuff. All right, metal chlorates. So when heated, they produce a metal chloride and oxygen gas. So here we go. I look, I've got a single reaction, a reactant, decomposition. Now I'm gonna look at it. Is this a metal carbonate? No. Is it a metal hydroxide? No. Is it a metal chlorate? Oh yes, yes it is. And so that 
that potassium now goes with chloride, potassium chloride, and my other product is oxygen gas. And of course, then you have to balance it. Acids. Now, I am just, we're just showing this to you. You don't have to memorize this reaction, but just so you know, um, acids also decompose, all right? And when they do, they, uh, when heated, they produce non-metal oxides and water. So you can take, again, how do I know it's an acid? Hydrogen's in front. So we have carbonic acid. We add some heat. It's going to decompose into carbon dioxide and water. Sulfuric acid with some heat is going to decompose into sulfur trioxide with water. All right, the fifth type of reaction. Um, for a lot of you, this is going to be your favorite uh, because the products are so easy. This is combustion reactions. Um, combustion reactions are reactions with oxygen that produce light, flames, and heat. Note that the combustion of a hydrocarbon molecule tends to produce water and CO2. Those are our products, super easy. Here is an example. Now, this is an example actually of two reactions. Uh, by definition, because it has oxygen, magnesium plus oxygen, this is a combustion reaction. But can you see that it's another type of reaction as well? We have element plus element, that also means synthesis. And so it only has one product. So, I mean, I'd like to tell you that chemistry has nice, neat little boxes for everything, but sometimes there's some crossover. It would not be incorrect for you to call this synthesis. It would not be incorrect for you to call it combustion. All right, so reaction with oxygen, producing heat and light. All right, so here we go, hydrocarbon. The, this is the one that we're really gonna focus on in terms of, um, you know, when, when we give you this reaction, this is the one that you really wanna know the products on, and that is when we have a hydrocarbon. Now, hydrocarbons are molecules that contain carbon, hydrogen, and sometimes oxygen, okay? That's how we recognize them. And so we have a hydrocarbon with oxygen, what we love about these guys is their products are super easy. CO2 and H2O, carbon dioxide and water. So as you already know, while those products may be easy to uh, identify, uh, a little bit more challenging sometimes with balancing those equations. Uh, again, this is what we would classify as a hydrocarbon. So again, carbon, hydrogen, sometimes oxygen's there too. When we react it with oxygen, what we love about that is that our two products are CO2 and H2O. So five types of reactions. If I find that I'm looking at a hydrocarbon with oxygen, I'm gonna identify it as combustion, and I'm gonna have two products, carbon dioxide and water. And there is our last one. Again, hydrocarbon plus oxygen. Two products, carbon dioxide, water. And as you know, one more time, the balancing sometimes can be a little bit more challenging. All right, ladies and gentlemen, five types of chemical reactions. Uh, five types, we have single displacement, element plus compound, double displacement, compound plus compound, Synthesis, element plus element gives me one product. Decomposition, single reactant, decomposes into two or more products. And combustion, a hydrocarbon plus oxygen gives CO2 and water. All right. All right, let's see if you can do it. Go ahead and stop the video. Practice predicting the products of these, uh, the combustion of these hydrocarbons. So you gotta add reactants to them and then do the products and then balance those equations. Stop now. Are those the, the answers? Welcome back. Here you go, here's your answers. All right, have a great day. Oh, there's more practice problems, but. Okay, practice problems. Try them. Stop now.
and welcome back. There's your answer. So again, this is a great smattering of all of the different types of reactions that we've covered in this uh, presentation. Thank you for your support.